Hold on to your butts. It's 40 Samsung Galaxy S6 tips and tricks in eh, about 12 minutes. Let's go. To take a screenshot, hold the home and power button at the same time. After the screenshot is taken, it will be in your notifications and you can share it from there. To get 100 gigabytes of free OneDrive storage, simply open the OneDrive app and sign in. Set up Do Not Disturb so that you're not disturbed at certain times. Go into the settings and enable it. Then you're going to want to choose which things can break through Do Not Disturb, such as alarms. Now you're going to set the schedule by choosing the days of the week when Do Not Disturb will be enabled. And also the time of day for it to turn on and off. There's no battery in the S6 that can be removed, so to reboot it, you can hold down the power and volume down button for 10 seconds. Now the device will turn off and it will reboot without having to pull the battery. To use wireless charging, buy a wireless charger and set your phone on top. If you don't want to buy a wireless charger, you can use the fast charging cable that comes with the phone. Use the Smart Manager app to check up on your phone. In the battery section, you can see battery usage, and you can also put it in the power saving modes, which we will talk about later. In the storage section, you can see which things are taking up the most space and get rid of unnecessary data. The RAM section allows you to kill apps, but we don't recommend you do that very often. And in the security section, you can see if there's any unauthorized system changes and enable Samsung Knox. Enable ultra power saving mode to get every last drop of juice you need. Go into the battery settings and enable it. And it's gonna turn off anything that's intensive and put your phone into a black and white power saving mode. If you're someone who is not very good at technology or you're lending your phone to someone like that, you might wanna go into easy mode. You can enable this in the personal settings under easy mode. And when you have this enabled, you're gonna have just a few apps on your home screen, which you can choose here. And it will also allow you to add speed dial shortcuts to make quick calls. There are a bunch of gestures on the S6. Uh, one of them is called Smart Stay, and when you're looking at your phone and Smart Stay is enabled, it will not turn off. Smart Alert will remind you of missed calls or messages when you pick up your phone. Direct Call allows you to call someone who you're having a conversation with in a text message. All you have to do is just put the phone to your ear. And you can also mute your phone by flipping it over or putting your palm face down on the screen. To remove the flipboard widget, just pinch out on the home screen, swipe over and uncheck it. And now it won't be there taking up any more room. If you want to add more pages to your home screen, do the pinch gesture again and then hit the plus button. To remove those screens, just pull them up to the trash can. If you'd like more space to put icons, you can change the grid. There's 4x4, 4x5, and 5x5. To customize the toggles in the quick settings, hit the edit button and just drag and drop and rearrange to your heart content. To really switch things up, you can do a new theme. Go into the settings and choose themes. Here you'll see a list of all the themes available. You can also download more themes. Just click the apply button to see one and it will show up immediately. Aw, oh, it's pretty. To remove unwanted apps, open the app drawer and click the edit button. Any app that has a minus icon on can be disabled or uninstalled. To adjust the screen mode, or how colors look and screen brightness, go into the display settings and there's four that you can choose from, adjustive display, AMOLED cinema, AMOLED photo, and basic. To turn on the swipe style keyboard, go into the Samsung keyboard settings. 
And here you're going to want to make sure that Swift Key Flow is enabled. To use two apps at the same time, click the Recents button and then tap the icon in the window of an app. Then you can open another app below that and both of them work simultaneously. That's real multitasking. If you want to download stuff even faster, you can use Wi-Fi and LTE together. Just go into the settings and turn on Download Booster. S-Finder is your one-stop shop to find everything on your phone. Just pull down the notification shade and tap S-Finder. You can type in anything here and it will show apps, files, photos, anything else that's on your phone related to the search term. If you've seen a notification but you want to be reminded of it again later, you can use a notification reminder. You can choose a time to be reminded to take action on the notification that you already saw but you don't want to forget about it. Make typing even faster by adding shortcuts to the keyboard. Go into the Samsung keyboard settings. And when you make a shortcut, you're gonna type a short phrase, for example, my email. Come on, Chris, you can do it. There you go. And then for the expanded phrase, it can be your email address. Now, every time you type my email, it'll autocorrect to your full email address. Auto track your subjects when you're taking a video to keep focus on the people that you're filming. Open up the camera and go into the settings. And you're gonna select tracking AF. To instantly review a photo after you take it, go into the camera settings again, enable the review photos. Every time you take a photo now, it's gonna show up there for a second and if you don't like it, you can delete it. To take a photo with your voice, go into the camera settings once again, make sure voice control is enabled. Now you can say, smile, cheese, capture, shoot. Take a photo with the volume button, just press the volume button. You can also take a selfie with the heart rate sensor. Have the camera facing you and put your finger down on the heart rate sensor and there you go, snap. If that's not enough for you, you can use pro mode. You can get to pro mode in the bottom left corner, there's a mode button. This lets you fine tune your camera settings with the ability to change white balance, exposure, metering, ISO, and focus modes. To go a step further, you can even set presets for certain configurations so that you don't have to adjust every single time you wanna take a photo. There's also a lot more modes that you can download from Samsung. For example, there's surround shot, rear cam selfie, dual camera, animated GIF, 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 GIF. It's GIF. If you want to factory reset your phone to get rid of everything and go back to square one, you're going to go into the settings, select backup and reset, and then you're going to choose factory data reset. When you tap that button, it will ask you to confirm. Chris does not have the guts to do it right now. You can hide certain media with private mode. This will allow only you to see videos, photos, etc. that are stored on your device. You're going to go to into private mode and choose how to enable it. In this case, we're going to use a fingerprint and that'll be our password. Turn it on. Now we're gonna go into the gallery. Here you can see a photo, tap the menu, and then you can move to private. And now no one will be able to see this unless they have your fingerprint. To communicate with other Galaxy owners, you can use the All Together app. This will allow you to communicate with anyone who has a Samsung Galaxy on the same Wi-Fi network as you. You can chat, send photos, share files, stuff like that. The Kids Mode app allows you to put the phone into, you guessed it, Kids Mode. You're going to have to download this from the Samsung App Store. 
like so. Once you're in kids mode, there's a bunch of kids only apps and you won't have to worry about your kid getting into something that they shouldn't and they can tap on that dinosaur and play with him. If that's too much work, you could just pin a specific app to the home screen so that it's only open and they can't go to any other app. You're gonna go into the settings. Pin Windows, turn that on. Now when you hit the Recents button and you scroll up, there's gonna be a little pin icon. And when you tap that, it's gonna open that window and they're not gonna be able to go anywhere else except stay in that app. And last but not least is to visit androidforums.com, which is a great place to ask questions and communicate with other Samsung Galaxy S6 owners. You can see what they're talking about, share your favorite themes, and do a whole lot more. And that's on androidforums.com. Find the Galaxy S6 forum. For full step-by-step -step written instructions, be sure to go to this post, which is linked in the description. And you'll also find a few more tips and tricks that we didn't include here. Thanks for watching.